Marathon Analysis of the Calm Akara. So this is Ajahn Spencer welcoming you to Calm School in the usual abstract manner I attempt to teach. And we're looking right now at a yantra foil, or as we say in Thai, penyan, a, a piece of metallic foil. Foil is actually makes you think very thin. Actually, they're, some of them are quite thick, and they are rolled into takrut or smelted into ingots later. It can be made from various metallic substances. This one is nirnak which is like a kind of copper or bronze based brazen alloy. This one has the image of the pet piaton, which if I use my laser pointer you can see here the shape. It is phallic lingam, shiva lingam, meaning the male genital organ. It has legs. This particular one has hooves here you can see. They don't all, but most of them will have hooves, but there are also clawed versions and with lion faces and fish types and all types of what we call that himapan, himapan animals. It has a tail hmm? and uh, some of them only have two legs, some have arms, some do not. Of course this phallic shape is reminiscent of the famous wooden phallic amulet called the palad kick which is related of course to the Shiva Lingam and to the Pet Piaton. So this Pet Piaton deity here, yeah, encircled by my laser pointer, has very many forms, but is basically uh, a phallic shaped animal, legged animal, and represents a uh, creative male libido. Mm and is used for various magical purposes uh, as well as in Sakyant of course for Thai temple tattoos uh, these are allowed to be below the waist this kind of tattoo can be on the inner thigh which is one of the popular places to make this amulet uh, this tattoo well it's an amulet a Sakyant tattoo is also an amulet but it's worn in the skin instead of on the skin or around the neck so amulets and Sakyan tattoos are actually one and the same thing with the only difference being that the amulet like this yantra foil as a takrut rolled up into a scroll is wearable and removable whereas the Sakyan tattoo is not removable this is why my personal opinion and one reason I do not perform Sakyan commercially for money is that uh, if you cannot keep the precepts of the Tamra Sakyan, of the Kupa Ajan, and of the Lasi, then um, you should not have it in the skin all the time. And amulets are more recommendable because you can wear them when you feel confident in your practice, and when you feel ashamed of yourself, you can take them off if you don't feel good and it lies on your conscience. Whereas if you have a Sakyan tattoo and you are in a period of your life where you don't feel you are practicing well or keeping the rules, then uh, this is said to cause yan siyam or siyam, micha siyam. Siyam means to fall into entropy, which is somehow, uh, I would like to compare with how a white magician turns into a black magician, uh, how um, things can go rotten, uh, a bad apple in the basket and then everything goes rotten. And so if you have a bad apple in your basket and you have sakyant, then everything can go rotten. And the uh, yan loses their power and can take control, which is why sometimes you might see some of the spiritual trances look rather demonic, in my opinion. That is why. And so we will now look at the yan a little larger, bring a little bit larger. We'll start to analyze. We'll start with the top here. From here. From here. This is a sacred na. That would be na until there. But because it is a yant and made into a sacred geometry design, it is connected to a unalone one, two, three. 
five yak. Yak means kings or not. And so this one here is a map. means Namo Putaya. This Na is therefore a Na Meta of the five Dhyami Buddhas in its own right. But as a central piece with these one, two, three, four pieces uh, also makes one Yan. And these four pieces go in this order one, two, three, four is na cha li ti na this is the cha and this cha and this is a cha this is a la to that this is a e so la lose the A connected to this and become Li, L and I, Li, and this would be a Ta if it had a roof on it but it's just a bottom piece here which is a lowercase consonant or a sunken consonant of the Ta consonant and so instead of having here a roof it has the I. So it is a da, lower consonant, lower sunken consonant with a e vowel making t. Na cha li t, which those who are well versed will know it is the kata hua jai pa chin pali or pa si vali who is very often seen in Thailand as a standing Buddha with an umbrella, which is a glod for Tudong. It is actually uh, like a parasol with a mosquito in it, which one would sit under to meditate in the forest. Uh, standing with a staff, sometimes with a naga head, naka, nag, nag, the naga serpent head on his walking staff and uh, the parasol. So you might have seen this statue that is Patsi Vali, or better said Patim Ali. So this kata na cha li di is the kata heart mantra of Patim Ali and is known for its great meta mahaniyam and mahalab power for lucky fortunes and for mercy charm. Uh, these three numerals will be called symbols made because this whole yantra foil is actually a design for a takrut and would be rolled into a takrut and these codes are either just numerical or series codes uh, to identify the authenticity of the amulet in the case of Sakyan it wouldn't be there and so we will now start to look at the kata around the pet payaton around here and so I will have to reduce the size a little bit, bring it up and expand so that we can analyze it. So, and so here we have the sa consonant with the e, which makes, of course, si. This is a rat with the e, si ri. This is a a, but in this case, this a is not an a, and so. This A is not an A because it is connected with this consonant and the A here. This A and the A in calm is a compound vowel which makes the O when written together. 
and they are bound by the consonant which comes in the middle which in this case is rather badly written it is a Po Sampao in Thai or Pa Akara which would look like this and so Pa with A and A makes Po Si Ri Po and this is Ko Kwai or Ka Akara Ah, there's a long A here. This is the A vowel, long A. And this is the Ka Akara. Ah. And so, Si Ri Po ah, Sorry Ka Na it can be a suffix or a prefix and is used as a joining punctuation between kata when inscribing yantra and akara. So this na can begin something else, be the end. This can end this phrase, it can start it here, it can be a filler, it can stand on its own because it is the heart of all sacred na and of the yant. So, si ri po ka na, si ri means majestic, po ka means possessions, uh, treasured possessions, uh, resources, cornucopia of resources, so a cornucopia of majestic resources, na is increasing the empowerment, and so that is the top line within the yantra. Mm. Here we have within here, mokata, and we have Na again as a prefix in the same context as this has been used, but instead of a suffix at the end, it's a prefix at the beginning. Na, and then this says sa with a c wa li long e. Not a e, it's a e. I have a line here, so it's not just the e vowel. It's the long e, and this is the la, which we can also see here. Uh, we saw before in the top the la. We saw that here is the la akara. And so. Again, na si wa li, which refers to Pratsivali or Pratimpali once again, which was mentioned in the above yantra up here, which we saw at the beginning of the analysis and analyzed this one hmm? if you remember the start where we looked at this one it said said na ta li ti which is the heart mantra of pra si Li. This is actually the person who has learned to draw these has a slightly incorrect inscription method. Very slightly. But uh, I suppose nobody is perfect, and so it's very difficult to learn all of the letters of the sacred akara and once you have learned them all what is even more difficult is to know the true grammar of spelling which consonants can be spelled with which others and which vowels can go with which consonants and which dosa got which soft end consonants can be mixed with hard consonants if you don't learn the families which are called wak 
then you will find it very difficult to know which two consonants can go together because when you have three or four consonants of the same sound such as the T or the K then uh, which in, in Pali and in Kaum uses more than one character for the same sound such as the Ka'akara there are various different Ka'akara and if you want to say Anka for example the Nga and the Ka together you would have to know which Ka to use and have to choose from various different Ka consonants if you know the families or the Wak as they are called then you will know which families belong together which can be mixed with each other and which cannot uh, some masters do not learn this level of grammar and so uh, this particular yantra is bordering on being about 80% grammatically correct but has some slight variations uh, you will also see this in English language or other languages that you have slightly different spellings even in different regions and so uh, or America and uh, British English has a different spelling for theatre and centre and stuff like that. And tomato, tomato. So, uh, whether you consider the magic to only be present when this grammar is essentially perfect, or whether you regard it as superfluous is a matter of personal belief. I don't wish to influence anybody on that matter, and I don't wish to answer questions about that because it's a matter of personal belief and faith. So please don't mail me to ask that particular question because I can't answer it. You have to answer it yourself. And so we shall now continue to the remaining akara within the yant, if I can analyze them. So we had si ri po ka na and then we had na si wali this is wrong si wali I actually just said sa sawali this bit is the top of the sa this should be cut off and chained for something like this over here the e and it should so with this it is a c c so this is correct and here he's done it again it should say na si wali but it doesn't say si wali it says na sa wali so here he had forgotten to turn the sa into a si mistake in this yantra doesn't matter because to me if it matters to you it depends on you and so na si wali we'll now turn it round to look at the other piece below which is upside down written and that's why I'm turning it round so we can look at it and so we can now see we have here if it was upside down at first I thought it was a O but now looking at it this way I see it is a A this actually is very hard to read it would be if both ends like this would be a ya and so if that is a long ah it's badly written and I'm assuming it is would make this a and a ah, and the ya in the middle would make compound vowel o with ya dominating it so it would make yo sa yo doesn't make sense to me I don't know I think it should say B.O. I don't know this kata and I don't know the master who made it and so it could be very meaningful in his own formula. Not allowed to discredit it because I don't know what it's supposed to be intended to represent and we use very sh much short codes when writing yantra and to fill in spaces with and what is important that he who is empowering knows the meaning of his own code. 
and so he who is reading does not necessarily need to know so and here we have again as I have explained the letter na as a binder and it is also the beginning of a kata here which we also had at the beginning which is na cha li and the ti na cha li ti hua chai pa chim pali the heart mantra of Patsivali. So we remain with one secret and between this one and this one a spelling mistake because this say C and this should actually say C with a long E like this one this here with a long line up here mm. this sa should have this piece removed and it should have this piece placed in its stead mm -hmm. so it should have the bottom piece here then go like this and then instead of this piece have a long E vowel here would make it into na C same as this but with a long line here to turn C into C would say na C wa li And so if I were to correct it, I would change the sat like this. If you can see that, I can do a bit bright, wider. So it should be na si wali and that would be correct and so one spelling mistake in this na si wali instead of na sawali it should be na si wali is important consider this I don't know that's up to you for me it's not important because the empowerment is not in the writing rather in the mind of he who empowers and in the mind of he who believes in that power because everything is imaginary and magic and even all of our scientific discoveries are actually all imaginary for he who understands so this is the end of the synopsis of this particular yantra yan pet payaton which is a seduction mahasani yantra and can be tattooed or worn as a takut or payan yantra cloth or many other forms of amulets such as lockets can also make potions balms and oils for seduction purposes and even for ingestion which ha are empowered with this particular wicha. So, yeah, this is Ajahn Spencer for the Buddha Magic Project and the Sakyan Foundation. Hoping you enjoyed this and learned something. Signing off with the last piece of the analysis, which is, of course, within the head here, which is just three na and one ma and is just empowerment increasing empowerment as to the last two letters here saye could be sape but I don't know and so 
I apologize for leaving one small mystery within the end. This is Ajahn Spencer, signing off. <laughs>